Hi, this is David McCann for WebTNG. In this screencast, I want to take a look at a new backup and migration plugin called WP Vivid. In the past, for moving a website from development to production or from production down to development, I've tried and used Backup Buddy, Updraft Plus, and all in one WP migration. Updraft Plus and All-in-One WP Migration both work well. However, one of the things that makes WP Vivid stand apart from those is that the migration is included in the free version of the plugin. With Updraft Plus, you have to buy the premium version of the plugin or the migration add-on. And with All-in-One WP Migration, you usually have to purchase one of their extensions if your site is any size at all. So I thought I'd do a walkthrough of WP Vivid so you can get a sense of whether it might fit into your workflow. But before I wanted to do the walkthrough, I wanted to do a hat tip to Adam Pricer of WP Crafter. In his Facebook group, he mentioned this plugin, and there's a dub feedback review to the plugin author that he shared. So I learned about this from him. This is the plugin page in the WordPress plugin directory. As you can see, the plugin is quite new. It's only got 300 plus installs, but it does have 12 five star reviews. You can see information here about the plugin. It has free cloud backup to Dropbox, Google Drive, Microsoft OneDrive, Amazon S3, DigitalOcean Spaces, SFTP, FTP, and they're adding new ones. It also allows you to do a site migration. If both sites are available on the internet, you can do a site-to-site -site migration. Otherwise, you can do a backup on one site, upload to another site, and do the migration that way. You also see that there, the support in the forum is active. So let's walk through a migration. I have here a local site that is fairly van vanilla. I have Astra installed and, and the Astra Pro plugin, Elementor plugin, and Elementor Pro, but all we have here is the hello world and the sample page. Then on the internet, I have a site that has a pre-designed homepage layout here. It has a blog page with two posts. This site has many more plugins installed. It has Classic Editor, iTheme Security Pro, Main WP Child, Malcare, Blog Vault, Stencil for WordPress, WebArcs, WPSMTP. Some of them are enabled, some aren't. Okay, so the goal here is we're going to bring the site that's on the internet down to local development. So we're going to need to have the WP Vivid plugin installed on both sites. So let's go ahead and install it on this one. Okay, so this is the interface here. You can see we have several menu items here, which are the same as these tabs up here. And what we want to do is create a backup here and download it and then upload it to the local site. So we want the entire site. So let's go ahead and do the backup. Okay, that was pretty quick. Now let's download it. So before we go over to the other site and look at what's been downloaded, just here are the places where you'd set up your schedule for a backup and set up your remote storage. This key here is if you're doing a site-to-site -site backup that they both have to be online. So the download was pretty fast, but then took kind of a long time. Maybe that's doing a scan of it. And let's go look at the download here. So this is the way it names 
the downloads, tells you the name of the plugin, the date, and, and this bit here. It doesn't, though, name it with the site name. And that would probably be nice for keeping track of it. Okay, so let's go to the other site and upload that. So we're going to first install the WP Vivid plugin on our local development machine and activate it. Okay. Okay, we're going to upload it here. See how long that takes. Here's the progress over here. Okay, so now we want to restore it. And it recognizes here. So we want to restore and replace the original domain name with the new one. And this takes a while here. I'll close this. Okay, it says it finished. Oh, I guess it's still going. Okay, it says the restore was successful. Let's log in again, probably need to. Okay. So now let's see what we have. We have all of these plugins that were on the site on the internet are now installed and we have some that are deactivated and the rest are activated. And we go and look at the home page. Here's our pre-designed home page that looks nice. And here is the blog page with two articles. So it worked well. The migration worked. Let's try. I want to look at one more thing here. I want to take a look at the database. And typically when I do this, I, when I do a migration, I check this also. So for things in the database that maybe didn't get migrated over. So I'm going to search for those, pause the video and search for those. And so it did find a bunch that needed to be updated that had the old URL in it. I went and looked into the database at those, and most of those are in log files, which probably isn't a big deal. But I think I would run something like Better Search and Replace anyway, just to be careful and sure that everything got moved over. So anyway, I think I'm pretty pleased with how this worked and I'm going to try using it some more with some migrations and think it could be a good option for people and maybe avoid having to buy a premium plugin or extension. So I hope you found this video helpful. Let me know in the comments if you have some questions or feedback. Thank you. Bye-bye.